teaser, a film by Clive Barker. We'll tear your soul apart. Hey guys, yesterday was Hellraiser's 25th anniversary. It came out on September 18th, 1987, when I was the ripe old age of 12. I wanted to do a series, like an entire franchise of movie reviews. Uh, of course, it's going to take a while, but... Why not start with Hellraiser because I bought it the other day used on DVD. Um, I've been building my DVD collection. So Hellraiser 1987, directed by Clive Barker. It was his first directing gig and it was based upon his novella called The Hellbound Heart. And let's get into the plot a little bit. For 1987, I think this movie was a little bit advanced. Uh, the plot is this guy Frank basically finds a puzzle box. Um, you know, it looks like that crazy Rubik's Cube thing if you know anything about Hellraiser. Apparently, in my research, I found out it's called the Lament Configuration. So what the puzzle box does is basically bring the Cenobites, which is Pinhead and all these guys. And, you know, he finds the box in Morocco. He comes back to America. He opens the box in the ceremony. And this is all at the beginning. And then out of nowhere, the Cenobites show up. He gets ripped to shreds. Um, fast forward, I guess, a couple months or whatever. And Frank's brother moves in with his wife into Frank's house, because I guess he's been missing or whatever. Um, and the whole thing about this plot is Frank, um, Frank's brother's wife, I bro believe the brother's name's Larry, had been having an affair with Frank right before their wedding. So she's obsessing about Frank all the time. And Frank was like this hedonist, sort of, you know, bad boy type guy. And what happens is, during the course of the them moving in, Larry cuts his hand and he winds up running up to his wife and he bleeds on the same spot that Frank was, you know, taken by the Cenobites in. And somehow that, you know, they don't really explain in the movie, but somehow that reactivates Frank. And he starts coming back piece by piece. And he sort of comes back in this zombie form. And since the wife's been obsessing with him the whole time, you know, she goes through all these flashbacks and stuff with them having sex and stuff. She winds up helping him basically kill people so he can feed off the bodies and rebuild himself. In the meantime, the Cenobites find out about this. And Pinhead, their leader, and the Cenobites, Chatterbox, all those guys, whatever. They come back, and they want Frank back because nobody escapes from, you know, Pinhead and the boys. So that plot explanation is little. The plot is pretty complex for, you know, an 80s movie. But uh, this is what I liked about the movie. Basically, you know, it's ahead of its time. Um, the Cenobites, namely Pinhead, who's the leader, although they never refer to him as Pinhead in this movie. I guess in my research also that... They only refer to him in, as Pinhead in one of the films. There's eight other films besides the first Hellraiser movie. Um, so this one, you know, way ahead of its time. It's got this really gothic-y type of feel a little bit. I'm sure it's, you know, it's based on a novella called The Hellbound Heart. And it has a lot of, like, Edgar Allan Poe type overtones. Um, especially the way Frank comes back to life. And, the you know, the methods the wife uses to kill these people. So the wife kills these people and slowly Frank comes back and it's got this really cool makeup and he looks like a zombie and the wife's killing people and you know in the meantime the stupid husband's you know watching boxing or whatever downstairs. That is the really good part and it has these really just adult themes. I mean they're going to re make a remake and if they do it PG-13 it's an automatic fail because Hellraiser is one movie that was definitely intended to be rated R. You got your bondage themes, you got your sexual overtones, you know sadomasochism sadomasochism, the, um, hedonism, you know, sex, leather, you know, whips, chains type shit. It needs to be rated R if they make a remake. And another really good thing is, like, compared to the rest of the 80s movies, you know, the Cenobite, even though they're not in it that much, the first Hellraiser movie does not have the Cenobites in it that much. They're a complete contrast to the, you know, slasher killer Jason Michael Myers or the smart-ass Freddy that we got Pinhead is like an articulate, smart, bad guy. And of course, the entire Cenobite design was way ahead of its time also. Something you would never see in the 80s. These guys were creepy as hell. I mean, they set off, you know, numerous other rip-off type of creatures. As, you know, as recently as Cabin in the Woods, you had a guy basically based on Pinhead in that. And they're just clad in leather, disfigured, really good makeup effects. Good, there's plenty of gore. And not that that makes it a good horror movie, but it's really well done. I mean, these Cenobites are like, you know, they believe in torture. They believe in pain, suffering, pleasure, pain, the mix of the two, you know. So you really have a strong S&M type of 
overtone to the whole thing. So besides the cool iconic designs of the Cenobites and, you know, the whole setup of the little Lament configuration box, all that cool stuff, there was a lot that I didn't like. And I remember seeing this movie originally when I was 12, and I think I left the theater, and, you know, besides probably some bad parenting, I just didn't understand this fucking movie. I, I remember watching the first time I saw it and was like, that's pretty good. But when I left the theater, I was, like, confused, probably because... I was 12 and I had no idea about hedonism, sadomasochism, you know, pleasure, pain, anything like that. I was a dumb little fucking kid. So what doesn't hold up about this movie 25 years later? And there's one particular effect. It just bugged me. It threw the whole tone of the movie off. Um, and I don't really want to get into it, but it's one creature effect. They don't really explain what it is, if it's a centibite, what it is. But it's a creature. It's a horrible design. That and some of the other makeup effects look a little eh, but most of them are pretty good. And like I said, the plot is just so not comp. It's not overly complex, the plot, but it seems like there's some explanation missing. Um, you know, if, unless you pay super close attention, you're not going to realize why Frank came back exactly. Um, and, you know, we're never told how the Cenobites exactly work, who they work for. It's all very vague. So those are a couple of the parts as a kid, I had a problem with it. And now, even as an adult, the story's a little... Eh, the plot is kind of... I don't know what the term is. Wonky, maybe? I don't know. Some, It's just kind of... But overall, the movie is really good. And 25 years later, it still holds up. Probably the best of the Hellraiser series, at least that I can remember. I know there's a couple later ones that I liked. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go through the whole series, I think. And um, do all the other eight movies. And I remember I saw the last one recently, and it was horrible. But... I'm going to go through the rest. So I'm going to give Hellraiser Part 1, 1987, 4 to 5 stars. Uh, a really strong 4 to 5 stars because I think it holds up over all the years. Um, you know, ahead of its time probably. You know, the first thing that probably put Clive Barker in, you know, the pop culture awareness. You know, made people realize who Clive Barker was. And he went on to do other great stuff. I mean, he still churns out some pretty good horror stuff. Here and there, you know, he went on to direct uh, Nightbreed and Lords of Illusion, which are both pretty good movies. I really like Nightbreed. So, four to five stars. And if you don't want to see me review the other eight Hellraiser movies, comment below. If you do want to see me review them, comment below. Um, tell me what your favorite Hellraiser movie is. And that's it, guys. Hellraiser. Beyond any terror you have imagined. <laughs>